Hey friends, welcome back to Anish the Traveler. I have been visiting a beautiful historical place that has got volumes to tell us about the history it holds. Well, we are at the Golconda Fort, Hyderabad, and we will take you right through the doors and the beautiful ways. If we talk about the Golconda Fort in Urdu, it reads or translates as Round Hill. In Telugu, it reads as Shepherd's Hill. Golconda Fort was built by the rulers of Kakatiya dynasty. and because of the vicinity of the diamond mines that it holds especially the kullur mine golconda flourished as a trade center for large diamonds known as the golconda diamonds if we talk about the gates of golconda fort it has eight gates out of which the main gate the fateh darwaza that you see here or it's called the victory gate and this has steel spikes to protect it from elephants the length of the gate is around 25 feet and the width is around 13 feet and it was built to commemorate the victorious march of mughal emperor aurangzeb this gate is quite fabulous and has got a beautiful architectural work done inside and around unlike the other fort i must tell you it is really really spacious and this is what it looks from the interior the pathway has lush greenery i must say and like the other forts that we have around and what you see around are the different ruins of the different palaces and mosques and others that we once had over here these are also the ruins of the fort and here we have a beautiful water tank that is not any more used it was once upon a time used for storing water the golconda fort actually overlooks the city i don't know i've heard a lot of people tell me that museums and these kind of forts are boring places to visit but let me tell you each and every brick that you see in a fort has witnessed a lot beyond your imagination the pathways are really beautiful here it's covered in green and it contrasts with the blue sky that you have up there. what you see to my left is actually called the asla khana which once could have been the weapon storage or the armory of the rulers that once ruled here they have a lot of collection and this board reads that it is a slakhana what you see to my left here was once upon a time artillery and here that you see like huge poles and not poles but 18 feet long guns i don't know how magnificent it would have been to see the army use them i doubt whether a person can single handedly handle it and you also have the cannon balls preserved over there the cannons once belonged to the mughals Now we are getting into the other part of the fort. You can see the beautiful arches. This building what you see is the accounts office which they used to maintain the accounts over here. And what you can see is the shelf to store the papers. With the beautiful interior. and the hooks what you see inside the arch is to keep the files like a, it it can be used like a racks this walkway what you can see is it take you to the rani mahal and the other parts of the fort what you can see and it once upon a time it was a diamond trading center the golconda fort used to have a vault where the famous koinoor and hope diamonds were once stored along with other diamonds golconda is renowned for the diamonds found on the southeast kollur mine near kollur guntur districts paritala and ankur in krishna district and cutting was the done in those days at kakatiya region india had the only known diamond mines in the world golconda was the market city of the diamond trade and gems sold there came from a number of mines fortress city within the walls was famous for diamond trade its name has taken a generic meaning and has some to be associated with the great wealth many famed diamonds are believed 
to have been excavated from the mines of Golconda. Now we are heading towards the Rani Mahal, Rani Mahal complex. It's also known as Bala Hisar. It is a with a huge pillar, multi-storied structure. You can see it, and we are getting into it. As you can see, so many halls, rooms, and so many. entrance after getting here we can see so many entrance and it's just like an a hall from here you have a beautiful view of the front side of the fort with lush greenery and so many tourists are coming and visiting the fort and this is the entrance we are getting into the darbar hall this is the way for the darbar hall and it's totally dark i could only visit this fort you would come across this cunning acoustic effect we were clap under the fateh darwaza and we heard clearly almost a kilometer away in the bala hisar pavilion at the topmost point of the acropolis this cleverly engineered device was an important security device when the fort was the center of empire and tempted many invaders by the legendary belt this included the mughal emperor aurangzeb who finally prevailed after a siege that lasted 9 months and the bribe that got his armies past the imposing walls and forbidding gates with sharp spikes that even kept elephants out and this is what the rani mall there are so many i think so it's just like a stage and some of the structure has been collapsed you can see the fountain in between Golconda fort can be visited from 9 a.m. to 5:30 p.m. The fort is opened on all days except Friday. Light shows are also conducted in the fort in English, Hindi, and Telugu. As you keep walking through this uh, peripheral courtyard, whose origins have been lost in the annals of time, I don't know. It has some sort of mystery here. The stucco work. You know when you walk the footsteps of the kings who once walked here, the breezy walls. I don't know. I feel as if the wind whispers stories into my ears. I get the feeling that the fort holds a lot of secrets what's not known to us today. The citadel of this particular fort has many facets, and if you look around, you find the three-story structures, arches, and This citadel is all about the ruins of the forts that we once have here. As we keep walking up the area, we come across the entrance that takes us to the various worship places of the fort here. At this particular point, you have a better look at the complete courtyard and I stand at an elevated point it's really lovely to see the entire fort around a magnificent structure it once should have been if at all today even after the test of time if it remains in ruins without losing its glory and glamour climbing up all the way from down till the top or the elevated area is not an easy task it's a tedious work so this is not recommended for people who are quite aged and if at all you're climbing do carry a good bottle of water with you unlike many of the folks that we have in india a mosque in the temple can be seen standing in a 
syncretic solidarity for centuries here. What you see here is a Kali temple and this when you come out will lead you to the Ibrahim Mosque. It's a lovely thing to see such beauty of Indian solidarity that has stayed for centuries together. We are on our way to Paramati Baradari here. It is a part of Ibrahim Bagh, a Persian-style garden built during the reign of Ibrahim Kuli Qutub Shah, the second Sultan of Pulkanda. The historic pavilion of Paramati Baradari has 12 doorways and it gives you a wonderful view of the entire area around. You can see the beautiful green surroundings here and you are just overwhelmed by the fresh breeze that you get to experience at this particular pond. It was built by the rulers of the Golconda dynasty and it overlooks the river Musi. Bardari or Biradari if you say actually means brotherhood and it originates from a Persian word Baradar which means brother. This is like an eagle eye view of the entire area that we have here. The view is simply breathtaking, it's lovely and one would be lost for at least few minutes when you stand at this particular point. Overwhelmed by thoughts, the eerie and the mystical surroundings and the imagination taking you on a high flight. This is all about Golconda Fort. Here we are going to sign off with the promise of a new video. Please do like, subscribe and share our channel. Thank you for your support.